So welcome back students. So in the previous lecture we have seen the production of ethyl benzene and we saw both gas phase and the liquid phase alkylation using the Monsanto Lumos and the mobile badger process. So now we move on and we take a class of reactions, the exothermic and endothermic reactions. Uh, especially we will focus on the adiabatic type of reactor and a special case will be seen here in this lecture which will deal with the reversible periodic flow reactor. So, and one of the example we will take is the production of styrene. So, what we discuss here is the adiabatic reactors we have already discussed in the previous two lectures. Now, the addition to it is the periodic flow reversal. So, this the concept of periodic flow reversal will be outlined in the subsequent, subsequent lectures and the subsequent uh, slides. So, what it is it means that uh, whether we have exothermic or endothermic reactions uh, rather than to increase the number of unit operations you know you suppose for exothermic reaction the temperature rises then your uh, reaction rate decreases okay and your temperature has to kept lower. So, what you do you add additional reactor a quench reactor remove the reek and then you again continue the reaction. So, it increases the investments. So, that is we will see whether it is possible to do all this in a single reactor we will see that. Then exactly that what it discusses, it discusses the control of the exothermic and endothermic reactions. So, we will take the example of an endothermic reaction here. In this we will take the production of styrene because the production of styrene is a classic endothermic process and this is very important in the concept of polymer industry because the polystyrene is usually used as a polymer in packaging materials. So, styrene is the monomer here in this case. So, the production of polystyrene is very important. So, we have seen that in the exothermic equilibrium to achieve a desirable equilibrium between the reactant and product. Okay, so, uh, the temperature must be as low. So, I must just uh, repeat. So, any reactions it has to be two processes involved. One is the thermodynamic control and the reaction rate control. So, thermodynamic we know that uh, we can always find out the conversion that is by the dissociation how the reactants and products they should be in equilibrium with each other. So, so, it depends upon the temperature. So, as you increase the temperature in the case of exothermic reaction it decreases and if you increase the temperature in case of endothermic reaction it increases. But then uh, the temperature should be low because once the exothermic reaction starts the temperature keeps on rising. So, then the conversion will be very low and low. So, there is certain temperature is required for the reaction to proceed at a satisfactory rate. So, the temperature should be a outcome. So, our idea here in this lecture is can we just move away from this thermodynamic extent of reaction, can we move away from the thermodynamic conversion limits that is we will see. So, the issue is if you use a heterogeneous systems or catalyst bed. So, the issue is when you start the in the start of the reactor the conversion will be very high, but at the exit of the reactor that is at the exit of the catalyst bed and the reactor means I am telling it is a uh, let us say it is a fixed bed reactor with a catalyst bed inside it. The temperature will rise at the end, so the conversion will decrease. This is primarily to due to the exothermicity of the reaction. So, it decreases the achievable conversion. So, what it does is it will invert the temperature profile. This is exactly what we do not want the inversion in temperature profile. So, it means that uh, uh, so the feed must be preheated while the product stream must be cooled. Okay. So, it must be little bit preheated. So, it is already heated and you conduct the reaction and at the end your product it should be cooled. So, if you cool the product then you increase the conversion at the end of the catalyst bed that is what the usually industry do and for the process to be continuing economically. Now, the preheating of the feed is usually taken care in feed effluent exchanger. The feed effluent exchanger means feed uh, is heated from some stream as an effluent stream from some other operation. So, where is the waste heat is there you take that heat and heat up the feed. Through the catalyst bed thus even if we heat the feed still temperature will rise because of the exothermicity. So, heat has to be evacuated between the reaction stages to prevent the reactor temperature from rising. So, you need a isothermal profile. So, if it is isothermal profile means you have to remove the heat in the intermediate stages. So, you, you either use a quench type of reactor where you quench the heat or you can preheat and then insert it into the reactor. So, that is called uh, insert the feed at different stages of the reactor. 
so that it gets preheated automatically through the incoming stream. So, uh, but this feed effluent exchangers, what happens is it will increase the investment and operating expenses because you need another exchanger, another heat transfer equipment to heat the feed and then send it to the reactor. So, you do not need that. So, it saves the industries, it increases the investment and the operating expenses. So, what is the solution? Solution is a reactor with a periodic flow reversal. Okay. So, uh, you see this diagram. So, in general this is the diagram. So, this is the feed, source of feed, feed, you know it is just inserted here. So, it consists of two cycles. This is the first half cycle I will be discussing. The second half cycle will exactly be the mirror image of that. So now, let us see what is this. You are familiar with these are valves. So, when it is bold, it is closed. When it is without bold, it is open. So, this is valve open valve closed. Then uh, this particular uh, this part is the inert bead and then there is the catalyst bed in here, this is the catalyst bed. So, you have inert bead, then catalyst bed, then inert bead. So, why is inert bead there? Because what you do is that uh, there will be heat of reaction in the aerothermic reaction. So, you want to absorb that heat. So, inert beads have high specific heat capacity, so it will absorb the heat. So, that is good because if you have catalyst at the end, you do not uh, you know you do not have much uh, to do about because the conversion will anyhow be less at the end. So, what this cycle is feeding a hot catalyst bed with relatively cold gas will cool the entrance side of the bed, but the exit side of the bed will get hotter due to the heat of reaction. So, for the heat of the reaction, let us say it is a we are considering an exothermic reaction. So, if the feed is inserted here and it goes here and it then enters within the reactor. So, it means that uh, what you have is this part, the initial part, the feed will be cold. So, I am assuming the catalyst bed is already heated from the previous reaction. So, you put a cold feed instead of hot feed you put a cold feed that is a cold gas. So, what it will do the cold gas when it enters. So, it will just cool the catalyst bed in the starting part of the reactor that is the upper part of this reactor, this part. It will cool, it will take up the heat, it will get itself preheated. Okay. But the issue is as it gets takes, takes up heat from the catalyst bed, then uh, you are you know you start the equilibrium conversion. So, conversion takes place. So, again when you go down the temperature will rise. So, that is exactly what I have written. The exit side means at this end the exit side will get hotter to the heat of reaction. Now, exactly when it becomes hotter what you do is you reverse the flow direction. So, it means instead of putting the feed here in this direction I will put a dot here so that it will not you put it here. So, I will explain in the next slide you put the feed in this direction from the lower part. So, this will be your inlet for the feed as soon as it becomes hot. So, what it has again it cold gas is passed, passed here. So, the obviously this arrow will change in direction. So, cold gas as it passes through here it will get heated up and again the same procedure will follow. Then uh, instead the product earlier the first cycle the product was coming through this part. This is the product if I draw it in bold lines this is the product. In the second cycle, the product will come here and it will exit here. So, it means I am reversing the flow. So, one cycle has two cycles, one half cycle to another half cycle. So, outcome is the relatively cold temperature of the portion of the bed that is now the outlet zone is conductive to the reaction equilibrium. So, same phenomena is happening when you send the feed from the downward side. So, it will take away the heat from the catalyst bed. So, this is the second half cycle as I was telling you. So, now you are uh, now see this valve is closed, this is closed, only this is open and this is open. So, what is your entrance of the feed? So, feed comes here, so it goes through here in within the system and it then goes here. Okay. So, it means that at certain time later inlet again get cooled okay, while the exit and outflow has heated. Flow is again the same thing will happen. So, you have here at the inlet 
if we we'll take away all the heat again the conversion increases this will get uh, cold so once this gets cold it will takes away the heat the inlet part the flow is again reversed and a fresh cycle begins again you send the feed from the top because at the exit of the reactor you need that becomes when it becomes cold that becomes the exit of the reactor and again in the argon cycle the upper part becomes cold it becomes the exit of the reactor so wherever it becomes cold upper or the lower part the it becomes the exit of the reactor so after this significant number of flow reversals an oscillatory or a stationary state is obtained so it means by reversing the flow at a certain time heat can be controlled in the reactor so you do this cycles again and again and again the flow is reversed and you get the desired product so temperature in the middle part but the temperature if i consider in the middle part this part suppose this is the middle part this is the middle part temperature in the reactor's middle zone remains above the reaction ignition point what it ensures is whether it is ascending from the top or from the down the middle part will always have a higher temperature because there is a reaction occurring because the reaction occurring means the catalyst bed is always at a higher temperature so the exothermicity is there then you do what you do is you check whether the catalyst bed is heated up with the end or and the inlet so that is what it is so if you see these inner beads are kept so that it can absorb the heat so it means the heat of reaction here is used to heat the feed as well as to cool the feed so it when it heats the feed it means it will take the heat and use it to heat the cold gas while cool the heat means obviously when I, it will cool means it will uh, transfer the heat from the inert bead to the cold gas so it will cool the bed so we are cooling the bed catalyst bed while heating the inlet gas flow so this is the overall uh, process so you have the first cycle just now i'll just compile so this is the first cycle the flow is this way as you see flow is this way and the second cycle you flow is this manner it comes here goes here okay so this is the way uh, this a uh, new concept that is reactor with periodic flow reversal rpfr is carried out so in a nutshell what have we seen it utilizes the heat capacity of the catalyst bed so an adiabatic fixed diverter with periodic flow reversal has been developed as an alternative so this is called rpfr in short so uh, aim of this two cycles is to harness the reaction heat within the catalyst bed so you take the heat to heat the incoming cold gas flow so now if i want to this is just now i discussed so now if i want to plot them let's say i plot with the y axis as temperature and the direction of flow to these directions whether it's the end of the cycle or the start of the cycle so i am in the mm, the orientation of reactor here doesn't matter so the reactor is so i mean both the ways we are plotting it in the same direction so it's not like that it will be opposite of each other so i am plotting what will be the the direction of the height of the reactor is immaterial here so if i plot them separately in the first and second cycle so if you see in the first cycle as it enters the gas stream the direction of flow is this side so it means direction of flow is from here to here so direction is flow is from here to here so the bold line see the temperature increases because this part this shaded part this part sorry not this one the upper part we will see the upper part is this one this inert so this part you know this part is where you get the inlet gas flow to be heated and at the middle part the temperature rises again at the end again at the end what it happens is you uh, just the temperature will die down slowly because you're taking away heat in the next part so second same way in the next part in the if you see the dotted line again the temperature will increase the direction of flow remains the same so if the direction of flow in the second part second half cycle is like this so your temperature increases it increases to the it will increase in the starting that is this part it will increase at the starting then it will go to a maximum in the middle part where the catalyst bed lies again because in the previous cycle heat has been taken up so 
the temperature will fall down. So, the temp you see the dotted line the temperature is falling down. So, finally, the temperature is actually maintained by reversing the flow. So, once the process begins the heat of reaction is thus sufficient to maintain its continuation. A sufficiently high temperature is maintained in the center point of the reactor necessitating the fact that the bed be composed of inert material. So, why we have chosen inert material? This is the reason because inert material has a high heat capacity and large particle diameter so it can absorb more amount of heat. So, it will reduces the price while the conversion remains unchanged. So, you do not need another uh, unit operation to take out the heat such as the quench reactor. So, within the same reactor you reverse the flow and you take out the heat. So, addition of inert thus also assures that the pressure drop over the bed is reduced. So, there are two ways one is to absorb the heat another is to allow the pressure drop not to be very high enough. So, it also serves two purpose dual purpose ok. So, moving ahead. So, there are some commercial applications for this reverse periodic flow reactors. There are three commercial applications right now. One is we have already studied in the previous module the oxidation of sulfur oxide dioxide for generation of sulfuric acid. So, sulfur dioxide converts to sulfur trioxide. So, for that if you recollect we said that the heat has to be taken out. In that we used some quench reactors same thing there are some improvement that the industry have taken up this use the wrap reverse periodic flow reactor. Another example is oxidation of volatile organic compounds for the purification of industrial exhaust gases and the reduction of NOx in industrial exhaust gases by ammonia. So, you know that uh, when uh, ammonia reacts with this NOx gases it will convert in nitrogen and hydrogen and water. So, there is another application this is the reverse periodic flow reactors. So, in order to reduce the need for feed effluent heat exchangers this RPFR is particularly attractive for weakly exothermic reaction. So, for weak exothermic reactions this RPFR is highly recommended. What are the potential application other than these three? Some of the potential application may be steam reforming and partial oxidation of methane to yield syngas or methanol and ammonia production and the catalytic dehydrogenation. So, either of these use the steam reforming partial oxidation of methane for the production of syngas or methanol production ammonia production or the catalytic dehydrogenation may be the potential application of this RPFR ok. So, that is what uh, when you are studying this particular course you should be knowing that uh, how you should apply your conceptual your concepts. So, can I improve the process? Can I improve the energy? Can I improve the consumption? Can I reduce the carbon dioxide formation? All these things you should always think again and again. So, as to you know you have to innovate the process. So, the industry is ready to take this uh, solutions. So, going ahead uh, exothermic reactions we have seen. Now, let us see if this particular RPFR the reverse fl uh, periodic flow re reactor can be used as a particular application. Yes, it can be used we will see that shortly. We will see some endothermic reaction and particularly the production of styrene. So, styrene as you know is very important is a monomer for polystyrene. It is uh, produced to the very uh, it is you know it is uh, used in very uh, number of pack to manufacture packaging materials. So, there are two different uh, polymers which is used where it becomes a monomer that is the acrylonitrile butadiene styrene system and the styrene butadiene rubber system ABS and SBR. So, these are usually produced from ethyl benzene by dehydrogenation. So, you have the ethyl benzene this is the dehydrogenation. So, this is a styrene molecule ok styrene. So, if you see the heat of uh, reaction is 125 kilojoule per mole. So, it is highly endothermic. So, the reaction is analogous to primary dehydrogenation reaction such as steam cracker. The catalyst is usually the iron based catalyst which is required to prevent unwanted side reaction. So, the catalyst the problem is with this reaction even though it looks very simple it is not that because there are two things whenever you conduct a reaction there may be some undesired product another is rate may be low or thermodynamic conversion limits. All these three plays a part. So, even if we write this equation, but to conduct it in industrial scheme of things is very difficult to implement. So, there are some side reactions such as isomerization and cracking. 
and there may be unwanted reaction from the carbon and they may form coke on the catalyst particles. So, because of this coke lot of CO2 is produced and the conventional styrene uh, if I am not wrong it is producing close to 27 million tons annually from styrene alone production of styrene because the once the coke is formed then you have air also in it and it goes up and combines and form carbon dioxide. So, it is said that it produced 27 million tons of carbon dioxide through this styrene process. So, now let us see what is the thermodynamics. So, it is a highly endothermic process that demands a high temperature. So, it is seen that low partial pressure of ethyl benzene is desired. So, if you see this particular plot it is a ethyl benzene equilibrium conversion versus temperature. So, you see the conversion is higher if I consider a particular temperature. So, conversion is always higher for example, at 800 Kelvin 1 bar and 0.1 bar, 0.1 bar the conversion is always higher as compared to, but uh, as you go up and up higher and higher and higher. So, you have a conversion to be higher with increasing temperature, but uh, uh, even though ethyl benzene is converted it is does not uh, mean that everything is produced to styrene. So, if you see if, so you can ask why cannot I convert at 1000 Kelvin, why do not I uh, conduct the experiment at 1000 Kelvin, so I get everything, but the issue is there are some unwanted side reaction at high temperature even though styrene uh, ethyl benzene will be converted, but, but anyway you have a higher conversion when you have lower partial pressure of ethyl benzene. So, it means you have to add some other gas in order to reduce the ethyl benzene concentration. So, it means what will the industry do? They will add steam, utilization of steam thus will provide heat and also reduce the partial pressure. So, you know you have studied this because the partial pressure means partial pressure of ethyl benzene plus partial pressure of the steam. So, earlier if you do not add steam the, it will be very high, if you add steam the partial pressure of ethyl benzene reduces, if it reduces you see the conversion increases. So, that is why steam is used. We will also see there are nowadays people also use carbon dioxide or oxygen, we will see that what is that, we will some process have been made an improvement modification has been done. But the steam to ethyl benzene ratio is very high 12 to 17, so for every 12 mole you need 1 mole of ethyl benzene you can add as feed. So, issue is while you do want to convert an appreciable amount, so it, you need a high flow rate, you need a high con conversion fine, but you also need a high flow rate, For high flow rate means you add more and more of steam, if you add more and more of steam then the pressure drop increases. So, you have to pick and you have to you know you have to modify your process variables accordingly. So, on a once through process if you have a once through process let us say you directly add the ethyl benzene and pass it through the iron based bed catalyst. So, temperature drop is almost 100 percent. So, theoretically, theoretically speaking this crude styrene plus some other compounds will be there ok, crude styrene plus other compounds. So, the temperature see the drop of temperature 520 to 590. So, it means your production will be very less with time. So, your conversion will be less ethyl benzene may be converted, but not to an appreciable amount. So, it is I think it is around 55 percent. So, this is theoretical 100 percent. So, if the 100 percent conversion is there your temperature should drop to around 590 Kelvin, but we do not uh, allow it to drop to 590 Kelvin. So, what we do we add another reactor. So, it means in the first reactor in here there was no steam you add ethyl benzene and steam and then the temperature falls down from 520 to 870 Kelvin and then while it goes up again some heating is there, some uh, addition heating is there. The, while you do the heating from 870 to again 920 Kelvin for the additional external heat it 920 again goes to 870. So, it is giving crude styrene ok. So, this is the way the commercial process usually goes about. Okay. So, you have uh, they place two reactor in series so that they do not allow it. So, a single pass conversion it is highly if, if you are considering the thermodynamics you know what is the temperature 590 Kelvin. If you are considering kinetics it is highly 64 percent in a single pass conversion. Okay. So, what is the improvement in the process that is the production using uh, the, the reversible periodic uh, this flow reactor. 
So again it is uh, same thing in the only in the first cycle, in the first cycle if you see in the first cycle I made it open. So while it is open and you add the ethyl benzene and steam together on the top where the temperature is less. Now the temperature is less means it is getting added and now here also intermittently also you add steam in the first cycle. So when you add steam here what it will do? It will lower the partial pressure and it will also increase the temperature. So it means the incoming ethyl benzene plus steam when it added gets up added here. So it has lower partial pressure as well as higher heat. So the reaction occurs and it goes to almost 890 Kelvin at this end. As soon as it goes 890 Kelvin at this end, you just reverse the flow. So now in the initial part if you throw it like this, okay. In the second part what you do is you I made a dotted line here if you see, okay. Like this you add it and then uh, instead of putting the, the first cycle it is like this steam, you insert the steam in this manner, sorry this will be dotted, dotted, you insert steam in this direction. So it means the inlet is here, you have steam with heat in it, lowers the partial pressure, increases the conversion. So again it goes to 890 somewhere in between. So this from this to this it become 890 Kelvin temperature increases. Again as it increases 890, again you go to the upper the second half, first half of the cycle and you keep on doing it periodically. So this has, uh, you know, this improves the conversion, the ethyl benzene and steam introduced in reactor. So additional steam is thus fed concurrently at one or more downstream locations. So you are feeding steam at one or more downstream location. The flow direction of the stream is periodically reversed between the reactor ends. So hope you have understood this particular process, the thermodynamics and kinetics of styrene production. So now what is the inert, just now I told the inert beads again here serves as the heat exchange medium. So the inert uh, it will try to absorb some heat. The idea is similar like previously what I have defined, it is just there to absorb the heat. So it prevents the occurrence of the reverse reaction which otherwise would have taken place at the end of the, so at the end there is a cooling reactor, it's cool, the reactor is cooled enough, cool enough. So if it is cold enough then may be undesired reaction, for example the form, formulation of toluene or something like that, toluene benzene. So it prevents that. So it is dual purpose inert, inert is to lower the pressure drop as well as to prevent the unwanted side reactions, okay. So this RFPR it runs at an 8 to 10 mole ratio, the ratio requires less steam. If steam is introduced at various location along the length of the reactor near isothermal operation at the target temperature which is about 900 Kelvin can be achieved. So I have shown here only one stream. So if it is introduced at various location along the length of the reactor so that you design in such a manner so you divide these streams based on the first and the second half of the cycle. So you can almost attain the target temperature of 900 Kelvin, okay. Due to heat exchange with the inert substance, the intake and output streams are substantially colder than the traditional operation. So as I told you, because of the heat exchange, because you are introducing the ethyl benzene with steam here, it also absorbs some heat, the catalyst bed. So it is substantially colder, the inlet of it is substantially colder than the middle part of the reaction, the cold is, what is the temperature at that point? 640 Kelvin. So overall the energy usage is significantly more efficient. So uh, now some new conceptually process has been taken. So the production of styrene, uh, this was fine but the issue is, there are some uh, issues with uh, this particular process. For example, um, the coke formation is another issue, pressure drop is another issue then uh, the energy consumption because it is highly endothermic so require energy. Can we make this process exothermic? Is it possible? So that the energy within whatever is liberated is consumed in it. That is exactly we want to see whether there is a greener path. So greener path means what uh, reduce the formation of coke. You reduce the formation of coke and uh, produce more and more styrene, the yield should be higher and higher. So there is some uh, important uh, uh, some formulation that is important development in the field of oxidative dehydrogenation. So what it uses, it uses a multifunctional 
catalyst which is called as calcium manganese oxygen on a uh, ferrite based coarse shell which is called a redox catalyst reaction. So, what it does is in the first uh, half of the cycle similar to the previous slides this is in the first cycle it will lose oxygen, in the second cycle it will add up oxygen from air. In the first cycle it will lose the oxygen, it will donate it to the hydrogen of the ethyl benzene molecule so that hydrogen combustion takes place to water H2O. So, in the next half of the cycle on the next stage it will gain that oxygen from air. Okay. So, it means it is a reversible process. In the first process it loses the oxygen, does the combustion, produce water and the second cycle it will again take the oxygen from air and it will revert back to its original catalyst structure. So, this is three pronged approach, it is a heterogeneous catalyst, an oxidation separation agent and it has a 97 percent single pass conversion, it is very less, the our conventional uh, this conversion path is very less and there is 94 percent selectivity, greater than 94 percent selectivity. So, the chances of desired byproducts or the unwanted byproducts are very less. So, it exhibits long term performance and it is under industrially compatible condition. So, it is not been used now in industry. So, it is a redox based catalyst, multifunctional redox based catalyst. So, you can go through this article, it is a tailored multifunctional catalyst in nature communication. So, it is a recent uh, development. But before we go into the process, let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages of the conventional process. So, now these are the different technologies. So, this DH is dehydrogenation technology just now what I have discussed you simply add uh, you take away hydrogen from ethyl benzene. Then this is oxidative. So, instead of oxygen, so you add oxygen it is oxidative dehydrogenation instead of dehydrogenation where what you do you add steam. In oxidation ODH what you do you add gaseous oxygen as the heating media. Similarly, in CO2 you add CO2 as a heating media. In all this process in this you are using steam in oxygen and CO2 what you do is you just decrease the partial pressure. You are decreasing the partial pressure by adding some other external source. Then uh, this is another one which is called redox ODX which is the new process which has been developed. So, uh, we have seen that the dehydrogenation process is equilibrium limited. So, what do you mean by equilibrium limited? In the dehydrogenous procession, the well established process it suffers from high energy consumption. So, if I write down here, it suffers from high, high energy consumption, high energy consumption. Because you are uh, putting in steam in it. So, you require more and more energy, then uh, it is equilibrium limited, equilibrium related and uh, moreover it has a complex, you have the products where you have benzene and toluene also formed. So, I have written here almost the efficiency, the amount of energy required to separate out the byproducts, it the regeneration cost is around 64.6 percent, heat of reaction is endothermic. So, you use steam, it is equilibrium related. So, there are a lot of disadvantages. Then some modification took place and you have oxidative dehydrogenation. So, oxidative dehydrogenation implies that you have the, so you oxidize in this oxidative halogen you add oxygen and with what, with hydrogen it gets converted to water. Okay. So, whatever hydrogen you are generating during dehydrogenation, it combines with oxygen and forms water. But issue is this is fine, this is not then dominated by the equilibrium. But the only good thing is you have a heat of reaction to be exothermic. But here also you have undesirable products because it increases the same thing, it increases high energy consumption. So, you have high energy consumption and the process is becoming complex. 
okay. So, when you add oxygen to lower the partial pressure, the oxygen will combine with hydrogen. But only issue is when you co feed gaseous oxygen, gaseous oxygen, it leads to undesirable CO2 formation. So, CO2 formation is there in this case. So, this is not at all good. So, you have a CO2 confirm, uh, formation. The CO2 conformation will lower the selectivity of styrene, lower the selectivity. Okay. Then if you use CO2, still it is equilibrium related, again it becomes endothermic, but separation load again is very high. So, but the CO2 what happens is, in the case of CO2, so issue is here CO2 you may be saying that okay it is good that we are using CO2 for some process. So, where this I can add it and lower the partial pressure, but there are some issues that is high carbon 2 you require high CO2 ethyl benzene ratio. So, because if you do not use a higher because then you have to take care of this you know what you have is the reverse water gas shift reaction. The you have the reverse revert water gas shift reaction. This you want to prevent. So, you are it is close to 10 you have to keep. So, that is why you want to avoid this revert gas phase shift reaction because it is equilibrium limited. So, it means that the so CO2 then the problem is it becomes more endothermic. So, it becomes more endothermic see these values are higher than the conventional dehydrogenation process. So, it becomes more endothermic. So, that is why keeping into all these disadvantages in mind. So, this is a disadvantage of dehydrogenation, this is a disadvantage of oxy ODH, oxygen ODH and this is a disadvantages for carbon dioxide. So, you prevent one because you need a high CO2 to EB ratio reverse water gas reaction you need to avoid and you becomes more endothermic. So, all this process have some inward disadvantages. So, that is why this redox ODH comes into the picture. So, what is this redox ODH? We will see in the next slide. So, this is it. So, now see ethyl benzene is inserted you have the catalyst bed the redox catalyst just now you have styrene and water. So, what happens this is the catalyst is OX. So, it loses the oxygen this oxygen combines with hydrogen and forms H2O. So, it means it will be one oxygen less. So, while it goes here it gets replenished with the air. So, oxygen from the air again get combusted and you have O2 lean air. So, this again goes to this OX. So, like that this cycle keeps on going. So, this is an improvement. So, the two steps what to do is the first step In the first step ODH take place, okay. So, what happens in the ODH you have this uh, styrene, you have uh, so what you have you have styrene plus water because uh, this hydrogen combines with the oxygen of the redox catalyst to form styrene and water. In the second step what you have is second step. This particular catalyst, this so it means that in the first step, second step, this MEMO, if you see this MEMO, O x minus 1 with plus air gets converted to this original ME, ME dash x. Okay. So, it takes up air. So, this is called chemical looping uh, combustion. So, chemical looping combustion means so, uh, you loop the catalyst from one bed to other bed, you in one of the bed you lose oxygen, in other bed you add oxygen. So, the overall oxygen is balanced both sides. So, the second step it is also called as you called as SHC, what is this the lattice the is called as selective, this is called as selective 
hydrogen combustion selective hydrogen combustion SHC. So, it means in this case your hydrogen is combusted, hydrogen is combusted with the oxygen to form H2O. Okay. So, the conversion of this I mean uh, you can first step and second step I may combine it together with not to be read separately because the issue is we call this SHC to be happening here. What is happening is the hydrogen in this after the dehydrogenation combines here it combines with the oxygen from the redox catalyst oxygen from the redox catalyst and it forms H2O. This H2O exactly escapes from the top of the reactor and this is again regenerated in the combustion reactor. Okay. So, the result is the entire process becomes autothermal, autothermal this is very important it becomes autothermal and no longer no longer limited by the thermodynamic equilibrium. thermodynamic equilibrium. So, it is no longer. So, it has so as I told you it is almost has a potential to reduce energy consumption by close to 80 percent greater than 80 percent it can reduce the energy consumption and uh, around 94 percent yield close to 94 percent yield. So, the catalyst is in made in such a manner that the oxygen actually escapes from the lattice sites of the catalyst. So, most of the research is in this article talks about the catalyst uh, preparation. So, how this they prepare this particular catalyst and uh, on the iron based substrate and how the oxygen escapes. So, you should go through this article. So, you will come to know. So, your main issue is this becomes autothermal sorry auto it should not be like this. AUTO autothermal they no longer limited by thermodynamic equilibrium. So, if you go to the previous slide I told that this is not related to thermodynamic equilibrium. So, the entire process is autothermal and the separation at the mean since it is 94 converted to this styrene molecule. So, the presence of other compounds that is the regeneration or the product recovery is very less. So, very less amount of other undesired products are formed when we use this type of redox catalyst. The redox means that is what we say the reduction and oxidation. So, you should go through this article very carefully and look at how the process works. So, I will conclude here this concludes the styrene process. So, you should go through this book and uh, this particular article which is now I mentioned. Then you also have the reverse flow operation in a fixed bed catalytic reactors. This is a review paper you should go all this through this. So, you will get more idea of this reverse periodic flow reactors. Thank you. Thank you.